For the entire month of January, I listened to music using only CDs, no streaming, because I've been feeling a certain way about music recently, and maybe you've been feeling the same. Music is great. Music is the coolest. And right now, there is more music than ever. In some respects, this is the best time in history to be a music consumer, a real audio gobbler. But that's the thing. There's a lot of music out there, and it's hard to keep up with everything. So many different artists, songs, albums, music videos, performances, marketing rollouts, all vying for attention, that the best way to keep up with it all is to lie down on the ground and do nothing for a long period of time. I won't lie, I began to feel distant from music. So at the start of this year, I decided to change my habits, see if there was a way for me to reconnect with music which is where this comes in. I figured that limiting myself to only physical media might force me to listen more consciously. Why CDs? I've already got a whole collection of them. I do also have vinyl records, but I decided that the portability of CDs would make the transition from streaming more seamless and thus easier to commit to. My plan was to listen to only CDs for the entire month of January 2024. I picked that month because the release calendar is usually pretty slow, so I wouldn't be super out of the know once my experiment wrapped up. I'm taking this experiment very seriously, and notice how I haven't made a CDs joke yet because this is no laughing matter. No other method of music delivery would permeate these sacred cochleas. If I accidentally pulled up a music video on YouTube. If I turn on my car and the radio is on. If an oboe. Okay, let me be clear that my little hyperbolic rant is hyperbolic. It's fine if I hear music in a coffee shop or a grocery store or anywhere out in the world that I don't have control over. I just won't choose to actively listen to it any other way. I even went as far as to delete Spotify and Tidal from my phone. I did leave my streamer of choice Kobuz on there, but that's because I decided to do something else in tandem with this experiment. Anytime I had the urge to listen to a song that I didn't have access to, I would add it to an ongoing playlist, a place to capture any songs I thought about. But what other tools would I need? Well, a way to play CDs would be nice. This right here was my first ever Discman. Without it, I wouldn't have been introduced to the records I love today. I even have a pouch with all of the records I used to spin as a child. Classic records such as the Chicken Little soundtrack and a single CDR that only has MC Hammer's Can't Touch This. Unfortunately, the motor inside this Discman that spins the CD no longer spins fast enough to play anything. So instead, I went onto eBay and got myself another Sony Discman. Digital Mega Bass. G Protection. CD. But I also wanted to see what other advancements had been made to CD players since the 2000s. So for Christmas, I got this CD player off of Amazon because the review seemed good and the company that made it reminded me of Shrim from that Tim and Eric movie. This is my guiding light. Neither CD player has a clip or anything that would let me carry it when I'm moving about, so I got myself a CD fanny pack. Lincoln had one, why can't I? I've got a pair of earbuds that I had lying around. And lastly, just for kicks, I bought a pack of CDRs. When 2024 kicked off, I was still at my childhood home spending time with my family. I had a three hour drive ahead of me back to my apartment, so I made my preparations and said goodbye to everyone, including this cat. This cat doesn't directly matter to anything else in the video, but I'm not going to not show him off, come on. I needed some tunes for this long drive. Thankfully, I got a bunch of CDs for Christmas, many of my favorite albums from the year prior, and they made my drive home a good time. The biggest thing was just my ride back from home, back to you know my apartment. It was nice to uh, feel more of a reason to listen to albums all the way through or to treat them in my mind as just one cohesive whole, um, and also not to be distracted by my phone or looking at my phone or anything like that. I will say though, looking at your phone while driving is bad and cumbersome and against the law. Changing CDs in a moving car might be even worse. I think I discovered in real time the appeal of disc changers in cars. But tomorrow is when I really put this bad mamma jamma through its paces, so we'll see. January 2nd was when I returned to my day job. I woke up, got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head, and before I made my morning coffee, I looked over my CD collection for a record to put on. It was nice to look over my collection and be reminded of records that I hadn't thought about in ages. I kicked off the morning by listening to Boy Bear's I.I. from 
2019, I think. Um, I'm usually not the kind of person to be like, oh, like what's a good morning record for me? What's a good evening record for me? But I gotta say, looking at my physical media and like perusing it to find the best record for how I'm feeling in the morning was really nice. I was like, oh, is this a Guster morning? Is this a Lawrence morning? Is this a Justin Bieber Believe morning? And then after this, I listened to a bit of the Japanese house's Good at Falling. Uh, her new record, In the End It Always Does, was one of my favorites of 2023. Uh, but I was like, let me check out the old stuff too, because, you know, I had her on the mind. And yeah, it's still a great record. Um, I remember there was a show I went to last year where someone came up to me because they recognized me from the internet. And they were like, man, you introduced me to my favorite record of all time, which is Good at Falling by the Japanese House. Um, so if, if you're watching that dude who met up with me at that one show last year, uh, I hope you're doing well and I hope you uh, are not only enjoying that record still, but also the new Japanese house record. But it was nice and I used the fanny pack from... Uh, my hair is so out of control. I'm getting a haircut soon. You don't have to leave a comment about it. When lunchtime came around, I decided to go into town and get coffee. So I got my fanny pack on and took a walk. I just went out to go get some coffee and I was bringing along with me the uh, little fanny pouch that I have with me. Take this off. This bad boy right here, uh, it went pretty well. I've got the Sony uh, Discman inside and it's nice too because the buttons, if you see here, all of them are right at the top or I guess the side of the unit. Um, which is nice because when you just have it on your hip, you can just punch them in when you're looking down. Uh, the Klim one has all of the buttons or most of the buttons on the front of it. So you'd have to take that out if you want to do anything with it. I had Phoenix's record from 2022, Alpha Zulu playing. I'm using these earbuds also. There was a part of me that instinctually went to like, do the swipey thing with them if you want to turn them up or down, or the click thing if you want to turn on or off the music. Um, but I can't do that with these. Like I have to physically go to the buttons, which was kind of tricky under this pea coat because I had the uh, fanny pack, if you will, under the coat. So if I wanted to pause or turn up the volume, I had to like lift up my coat open this up, press the button, and then put it back to normal, um, which is just interesting. I also went out at night to get dinner, and this time I was playing. Don't look at me like that. I don't know what it is. I think it was just like the bright orange spine of it just kind of called out to me in the moment. Yeah, I guess it was my, I think I only made it to, um, What's the what's the one song the one single that everybody hates the one oh it's a uh, the supply eyes that that one the next few days were fairly uneventful but on the sixth I had to make preparations for a coming snowstorm I'm out getting groceries now there's a bunch of people out and about too because there's a big snowstorm happening tomorrow a parking spot has not been easy to find you know what has been easy to find though. Yeah, just driving around with the CDs has been fine. If there's anybody out there who also has both I Am Easy To Find and Beck's colors in their car or in their CD changer, um, you are not alone in this world. When I got back home, look what had arrived, a CD that I ordered in the mail. Late last year, I got super into this record, Somebody In Hell Loves You by Sydney Sprague. Ordering that record ended up being a good call on my part because I was stuck inside the next day on account of the aforementioned snowstorm, so I got to hang out and listen to it all day. Good times. I really loved this record when I finally heard it like super late in December 2023. Um, and I probably would have put it on my best of, like the uh, my honorable mentions of my top 10 albums um, if I had heard it in time, but alas, I did not. Um, yeah, really, really good record. For all my calendar enthusiasts out there, this marks a week into my experiment. And honestly, it was going pretty well. Obviously, the music itself didn't sound too different, but the context of my listening made certain things stand out more. I didn't find myself skipping around songs or skipping between songs as much, because skipping around songs is kind of clumsy. In case you haven't used one of these before, the way that you fast forward or rewind is that you hold down the backwards or forwards buttons here, um, 
it, it's clumsy because you've just got to sit there and wait until you get to the point in the song that you want to listen to. I also wasn't getting as distracted by my phone as much as I was when I was using a streaming service since, you know, on a streaming service, I'm on my phone and that makes it easier to like pull up social media or YouTube or anything else. And here's something I wasn't expecting. The earbuds I was using did a remarkable job of isolating outside noise, but that also meant that if I wanted to hear something in the outside world, I had to take them out and pause the music as opposed to just turning on the little transparency mode on my AirPods, because obviously these don't have a transparency mode. This is all pretty mundane stuff, but the result is that I was able to take in more of the outside world and be reminded of songs that were just playing in public places. It was nice to go into like a Trader Joe's, hear a song playing and, you know, be reminded of it, and then maybe add it to that playlist that I mentioned earlier. This experiment was going great. Was anything going to mess me up? Yes. Around this time, we learned about new singles from Ariana Grande and Lil Nas X. I did not expect this. I thought I could go through January without any big music announcements. The last thing I'd want to do in January is make sound. Next Friday, I want to say, uh, Ariana Grande's first single comes out. I would be very surprised if that had any kind of, you know, CD presence. I don't know, maybe they will, who knows? But um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. I also began realizing how much music I usually enjoy that isn't on CD or streaming. Here's an example. There's a particular recording on YouTube of Daft Punk's Alive 2007 set at the Vegas Festival. The only significant differences from the CD version are a slight increase in tempo and every song being a half step up from the original. Those two changes were enough to make me fall in love with the set again, but I couldn't listen to that version in any tangible format, CD or otherwise. And fair enough, I can always listen to the regular CD version, but there's more than that. Late in 2023, I saw RRR for the first time, a wild Tollywood film with an Oscar-winning song, Natu Natu. I wanted to listen to this song, and I would have been happy to buy the whole soundtrack on CD, but not only is the soundtrack not on CD, but when I was doing this experiment, it also wasn't on streaming services. At the time of this video, the song is now on Spotify, so maybe there was a licensing dispute that's been solved? Mashups on YouTube, video game soundtracks that don't have a physical release, live streams where people play music. What about all of those? Recordings that don't have an official home. It made me realize how formless a lot of music is these days. We talk about preservation when it comes to digital media, but what about media that doesn't have a format to begin with? What about all this music that's just on YouTube or TikTok or a streaming service but doesn't exist anywhere else? What happens if it disappears one day? This was where I really started to feel the pressure of the release schedule creeping in. Faye Webster and Suki Waterhouse had just dropped songs. I wanted to listen to them, but I couldn't throw them on top of the new songs from Ariana and Lil Nas X. And I won't lie, I was starting to feel a bit of FOMO. Now you might be asking, Mike, you showed earlier this month that you had burnable CDs. Why didn't you just buy these singles somewhere and then burn them onto a CD so you could listen to them? That's a really good point, but here's a counter argument. I forgot to do that. Nearly halfway through this experiment and I encountered another snag, and it was a big one. One the size of multiple men. The National, my dads, my best friends. I was gearing up to do a deep discog dive on them. And I always give records multiple spins when I'm doing research for a DDD. I did already have a few of their albums on CD, but I needed the rest. I was visiting family again on the 14th, including the cat. You can't escape his all-seeing eye. And while I was home, I decided to go to my local mall and visit. The only Newbury Comics in New York except for the other Newbury comics in New York. Luckily, I was able to get a copy of The National's most recent album, Laugh Track. I ended up staying a few extra days with family because of another snowstorm. I even went digging through a bin of CDs in my room. Took me back to the days of college radio where I could just nab the first church's record or the sampler for this unknown British singer named Sam Smith. Honestly, there were a couple of days where I didn't listen to any music at all, which kind of bummed me out. I'm an audio gobbler, right? Shouldn't I be engaging with this thing I love as much as possible? I tried to get some thoughts out when I arrived back to my apartment. You know, my relationship with music does not mean I have to be listening to it every single day. You know what I mean? Like I, I can establish those boundaries and just because I went a few days without listening to a record doesn't mean I, you know, hate music now. Like 
uh, we, we all can define our relationships with music however we see fit, um, and no one can take that from us. It's really hard to uh, keep up with the conversation if you're not a part of some streaming platform, you know? Like, I mean, obviously you can keep up with it to a sense via, you know, Twitter, um, but like you can't listen to anything if you don't have like a streaming service you're subscribed to or if you just choose not to listen to one. Uh, like I still have not heard in full uh, the new Ariana Grande track. I still haven't heard the new Lil Nas X. Uh, Glass Speech puts out a new record today and I want to hear that because I've been hearing phenomenal reviews about it, um, but I, I can't. I was thinking about this, the new Ariana Grande song that I mentioned earlier, I still haven't heard it, but I also haven't heard anyone else talk about, like I see people on Twitter talking about it and the, you know, the one line uh, about the, who, how about why do you care so much about whose guy ride? Um, but like, aside from that, like, I haven't heard it played anywhere. I haven't heard any people in real life talking about it. I haven't seen it on TV in any way. And I was back home for a while. So I was watching like typical network TV and I just didn't see anybody talking about it. People talk a bunch about how music consumption, and I guess you could say it for all consumption, but we're talking about music here. Um, how music consumption has become far more um, fractured and how people, you know, will stick to the things they like, but they don't really, everything kind of stays in its own bubble. But like Ariana Grande is one of the biggest pop stars working today. Wouldn't people be talking about that more? I'm, I'm honestly, I am kind of shocked that I just, I have managed to not hear it, like it, out in the world. The 20th was my big CD expedition. I decided to hit up a variety of record shops in the greater Boston area with two goals. I'm hoping to find as many national CDs as I possibly can. Um, and if there's any other ones that look cool or look interesting, then I'll, I'll pick those up too. So yeah, here we go. This should be fun. I love you. Do you love me too? Do you say yeah? Yeah, baby. Do you say yeah? bunch of CDs here. Super Funk, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation, Kooks, Inside In, Inside Out, Sensual World by Kate Bush, Soda's Superhero, Interpol's Antics, the little puppet boy who gets in the car crash in that one music video, that's my son. I love you, I do you love me too, Purple Will Find Me, High Violets, Boxer. Royal Philharmonic plays the music of Oasis. Sun Power, I have no idea what this is, but the cover looked really cool, so. After visiting all of those shops, I had purchased well over a dozen CDs, and for the National, I now owned most of their albums. I was still missing their first three plus the EP Cherry Tree, and I figured they were all old enough that many record shops wouldn't have them, so I bought them directly from the band's website. In total, I spent $171.58 on CDs in that one day. The next week or so was honestly uneventful. By this point, nearly all of my listening was focused on The National. So I had their records on repeat with a little bit of Caroline Polachek on the side. Billion. January 30th is the anniversary of the Beatles' legendary final concert on the rooftop of Apple Corps, but more importantly, it's my birthday! I had gone out with some buddies over the weekend, so for the day of, I just relaxed and reconnected with some of my favorite records. And of course, the 31st was the final day of my experiment. I had made it a whole month only listening to CDs, and I celebrated this month-long project 
by accidentally cutting my finger while making dinner and having to get stitches. So now that my experiment is over, let's do some pros and cons. On the plus side, I definitely found myself enjoying the music more. There was a greater tangible connection to the music I listened to, and it made the act of listening feel more special. I was reminded of records and songs that I hadn't thought about for a while, whether I had them in my collection or I heard them out in the world. I also wasn't as attached to my phone as usual, which meant it was harder to shovel slop into my mind by way of social media. Being more conscious about what I put into my brain made me feel more at peace and present in the moment. That might not be related to music streaming, but it's a nice unexpected win. The downsides though? It's so inconvenient. Around my apartment, it was okay, but taking it outside meant I had to affix this fanny pack to my waist, and it was another thing I had to carry on my person. Plus, I had to be mindful of the earbuds and that corded connection. Of course, none of these things are genuinely annoying on their own, but compared to the wireless earbuds of today, there's no competition. In fact, the thing about streaming that I missed the most didn't have anything to do with the streaming service. It was my AirPods. Having these little buggers in my ears for most of the day meant I was always able to plug music or podcasts or YouTube videos directly into my sacred cochleas. Not having access to those quick fixes of the good dopa, that's what I was really craving. It all made me realize how severely music has lost the battle to convenience. Like, during this experiment, I saw this video of a mom going through her CDs, and her daughter was like, Okay, but here's the thing, is that if you like a song on here, I could play it faster than you'd be able to no, open this. Everything. And like, yeah, that's true, but that's not the point. That sums it up perfectly. The positive aspects of physical media are emotional, but the negative aspects come down to practicality and convenience. Also, this level of dedication to physical media can be expensive, especially when you compare it to a $10 to $15 monthly subscription that gets you a good chunk of all recorded music. I want to acknowledge that for as much as streaming has wrecked certain things about music, it has also provided access to music for so many people who may not have been able to afford physical media or don't live in a place where they can easily get physical media. Remember, I spent over a hundred bucks on CDs in one day, and most of those were used. New CDs can run you 10, 15, even 20 bucks. My CD haul would have easily costed four times more if all of the CDs I got were new. But that's weird, right? Like I'm an adult with an income, 10 to $15 for a CD, I can absolutely handle that. And yet there's a part of me that feels like that's too expensive. And at the same time, I have no problem dropping $350 on a gaming system and $60 for each game. And before you splice that bit out of context, put it on Twitter and call me a boomer, let me say right up front that this is an apples to oranges comparison. Video games feature so many different elements alongside music to craft immersive experiences that can suck you in for dozens, if not hundreds of hours. Plus, a lot of the big video games today don't cost you anything to play. But if we're talking about value, hours of enjoyment, and what we get out of the things we purchase, why can't they be compared? Lord knows I've gotten more hours of joy out of Midnight Marauders or A Deeper Understanding than this. But was it worth it to do this experiment? Yeah, I'd say so. Would I do it again? Probably not for an entire month. After January, my schedule for doing videos would be set back too much. I would be open to a New Year's detox though. And in situations where I'm doing work and I want to listen to music but not get distracted by my phone, I would definitely whip out the CD player. Should you do it? Maybe you know what you want or don't want more than I do. If this seems interesting and worthwhile, go for it. If it doesn't, that's cool too. Here's what I would recommend though, based on my experience doing this. If you've been feeling like the sheer waves of coming at you from all sides has made you feel lethargic or disconnected from the things you love most, do something about it. The platforms will not save you, the discourse will not save you, only you can save you. Take steps to personally reframe your relationship with the things you love most. 
in whatever way you see fit. And if the thing you love most is music, you don't have to resort to CDs, it could be anything. Get off Twitter, set limits to how much music you stream, make it a habit to buy more merch or physical copies of records, get off Twitter, go see more live shows, get the f off Twitter. If you enjoyed this style of video, let me know. I'd be interested to try this experiment, but with vinyl records or cassettes or radio, or maybe even no music for an entire month. Let me know.